Okay, next question. Are dogs racist? Okay, <laughs> believe it or not, I get this question a lot. And it's usually, I think my dog is racist. And they get all quiet and people are embarrassed to ask this question. Um, and understandably so. Um, but it's not unusual. I get this question often. Other dog trainers get this question often. And clearly somebody on Reddit thought that they should ask it um, and get Reddit to answer. So I'm going to do my best. Um, what this really comes down to, as far as my understanding as a dog trainer, is that it comes down to socialization and our own internal biases. Um, and I'm not the only one who thinks this. Apparently two, um, two researchers, Carly Beth Hawkins and Alexia Jo Vandiver of the University of Illinois in Springfield, their psychology department, they decided to do a couple of research um, uh, tests on dogs and racism. What they basically found was that white people reported um, that their dogs showed more positive behaviors towards other white people and more negative or racist behaviors towards black people, Hispanic people, people of other race races. And they had asked black people the same thing, that their dogs also were reported to be um, more positive towards other black people and less positive to white people. Okay, so are dogs racist? No. <laughs> no. What's going on here from a training perspective is that it looks like um, with any bit of socialization that we do, it's what we expose our dogs to when they are puppies and how we react as adults, as those handlers with our dogs as they go through their life. So in short, if my dog, I can easily train any dog to be afraid of something if my dog is on a collar, especially if it's a prong collar or something that's gonna cause pain, and I get startled. So let's say a cat runs across the street and I go, <gasps> and I pull up on the leash and I inhale and I'm like, ah, a cat, oh, I'm startled, ha ha ha, I'm fine. Well, the dog isn't fine. The dog hears me go, <gasps> and gets stiff and maybe a kick of adrenaline goes through my system a little bit. Dog can smell fear. Every emotion I have goes down that leash and right into the dog's neck. Cat means mom goes, <gasps> and pulls and I get a pain in my neck. So going forward, the dog might have a more sensitive response to cats or maybe a more aggressive response, depending on the sensitivity of that dog. Now, if I see a person of another color and my tendency is to maybe reach for my wallet or hold my breath or maybe walk stiffer or maybe get a little bit nervous, that's going right down the leash to my dog. So you can train your dog very easily with your unconscious biases and your unconscious racism to your dog, who can then start to like pick up on those feelings and that fear and start reacting in a negative way. The other side of this too, honestly, is socialization. So I grew up in the middle of nowhere, Maine. We didn't have a lot of black populations where I grew up. We didn't have a lot of Hispanic populations where I grew up. It wasn't until I moved to um, Ohio that I, there were populations of people of other color that I was like, oh, this is great. I get to meet other people. This is wonderful. I'm in college. This is wonderful. And then going back to Maine and realizing, dude, we're white. <laughs> like, my huskies were never exposed to people of another color. Um, the people of Maine really <laughs> were not exposed to people of another color in the 80s and 90s. Um, so if the dog is not socialized to other kinds of people or are not around maybe people who are wearing different kinds of clothing or different kinds of face coverings. Right now what we're seeing with masks, dog trainers are now having to talk their students through at a distance how to handle the mask covering and desensitize the dogs to mask coverings. It's hard and scary because now the dog can't see you. So if your dog has never really been around people who are wearing face coverings or head coverings or maybe are of a different color, they're going to respond maybe with a little bit of a fearful response, cautious at, you may be cautious at the lower end of the spectrum, maybe more outward signs of aggression at the other side of the spectrum. And if you have unconscious racist bias on your, like that you are carrying, 
which let's face it, I'm a white girl in America. Of course, we have to check our own racism and we have to help our, uh, we have to admit it, honestly. Um, every institution in this country is built on racism and that's just how it is. I'm not saying that to be woke. I'm not saying that to be anything other than honest. And we have to check ourselves. So no, our dogs are not racist. We are. And there's really no way around it. Um, but if you can work in the socialization um, protocols with your dogs around different groups of people, different kinds of people, kids, other dogs, cats, people who don't look like you, I think you would see a, a massive decline in the people who are reporting that their dog is racist. But yes, this is a very common question and it's a hard question. Um, I mean, from a dog training perspective, it actually seems pretty easy to me, um, but the root of the question is hard because it makes us have to look at ourselves and that's hard to do. So yeah, very, very good question.